Hi, everyone. I'm Matt Clark, Research Analyst with Money and Markets. Here's your weekly marijuana market update. Now, make sure you do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Get notified each and every time we post a new video. You can do so by just, if you're on the channel right now, just make sure you click subscribe, hit that little notification bell, and you get notified every time we put up a new video. Also, after you watch this video, head over to moneyandmarkets.com, sign up for our free daily e-letter. From Sunday to Saturday, uh, you get a free e-letter that gets sent to your email box that contains safe, sound, smart, simple, profitable investment information from my myself, from Adam O'Dell, from Charles Sizemore, our entire team. We all work very hard to get that information to you each and every day. So go to moneymarkets.com after you watch this video and uh, sign up to get safe, sound, smart, simple, profitable investment information sent to your email inbox every day for free. Now on with today's podcast, I'm going to talk about a couple of things today. Uh, one, uh, I want to talk about mergers and acquisitions in the cannabis space. It's uh, kind of been an interesting trend here. And then I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of the new additions we have coming to our YouTube channel that I think you're going to be uh, really excited about. So uh, let's get started. Um, for the last two years, I kind of did some digging uh, in, in 2019, 2020. It was pretty rough going on the cannabis industry, especially when you look at mergers and acquisitions. This is when uh, one company enters into an agreement to either merge or acquire another company obviously mergers and acquisitions. Now in 2018, uh, the cannabis industry boomed uh, with about 324 M&A deals, accounting for more than $7 billion in transactional value. That is huge. Uh, this was, uh, you know, when there was still more talk of cannabis being federally legalized, uh, you know, cannabis uh, stocks were uh, uh, in a good place, um, but then things kind of died off. And, and uh, you know, the, the $7 billion in transactional value was a big jump from about $1.9 billion uh, in, in, in deals announced in 2017. But the cannabis industry started to contract a bit in 2019. The number, of, uh, uh, the number and value of those mergers and acquisitions followed suit in 2019. There were only about 249 deals, which, you know, was not a bad amount, but the transactional value was only about $5 billion. Uh, that got even worse in 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, didn't stop transactions in the cannabis space, but it did slow them down. As of the third quarter of 2020, there were just 124 deals announced with a value of only about $615 million. This doesn't count the $4 billion uh, reverse merger between Afria and Tilray, um, but so the, it does add to it and it does increase that value, but it does kind of show a trend of, of M&A deals uh, contracting. Now, Cresco Labs also uh, closed out a $900 million deal to buy cannabis, uh, com Canadian cannabis company Origin House. Uh, and, and there was another big deal. Canopy Growth Corporation uh, came to terms with acreage holding finally after some back and forth and renegotiating the deal and setting things up. Uh, but this deal is more of a partnership than it really is a true merger per se. Uh, now, something else that's telling in the M&A space is a number of terminated deals over the last four years. These are when deals are announced and then all of a sudden one party or both parties agree to say, now, um, th this deal isn't going to happen for whatever reason that happens to be. In 2019, uh, there were just 92 deals in the cannabis industry that were terminated, but that transactional value came out to about $2.2 billion, almost $2.3 billion. The biggest one was Cresco backing out of buying uh, trite companies. Uh, this was supposed to be a big merger. Uh, this is going to be a, a big deal for Cresco to get another toehold into a couple U.S. states, and it wound up falling through. Uh, there's been a slowdown in 2020. There's about 64 canceled transactions that were valued at about $650 million. And that was still more than the total tra total actual trans uh, transactions up into the third quarter uh, of that year. Now, one might look at this data and, and, and these trends and expect the M&A market in cannabis to potentially slow further in 2021. Because again, uh, we, when you talk about legalization uh, efforts uh, in the U.S., things are kind of wishy-washy. Uh, there's really nothing that is uh, uh, making a lot of progress in Congress. Now, states are doing much more. I've talked about that in some previous videos you can watch. Um, but there's been a real lack of movement in federal legalization in the U.S. And cannabis stock prices have kind of been all over the map, especially in 2021, as has the market. I mean, we've seen downturns, we've seen upturns, we've seen a lot of different things going on uh, in the overall market. But I think it's an incorrect assessment of the market to suggest that M&A deals are going to slow down in 2021. In fact, I think they're actually going to pick up. And you can look just to 
last month as an indication uh, of that being true. There's been a lot of substantial merger announcements in, in cannabis. Hexo Corporation just announced last week, just before the Memorial Day holiday, uh, that it was uh, spending $768 million to acquire Redican, which is a privately owned licensing licensed producer in Canada. Uh, Cureleaf Holdings is uh, getting one of the largest outdoor cultivation facilities in the U.S. by buying Colorado-based Los Sueños Farms for about $67 million. That's going to be a huge deal for Cureleaf. True Leaf Cannabis Corporation announced a $2.1 billion acquisition of Harvest Health and Recreation, which is a Florida-based brand. And then Grow Generation uh, has announced nine different acquisitions in 2021 alone according to Cannabis Business Times. That's nine acquisitions. These aren't big acquisitions. These are, they're, they're buying uh, similar facilities that may have one or two in a state, one or two in Maine, one or two in California. They're not huge, but the fact that they're going out and aggressively pursuing M&A kind of speaks to uh, where they think the market is going. And I tend to agree. Now, of course, 2021 did kick off with the huge merger of Ireland-based Jazz Pharmaceuticals signing a $7.2 billion deal to acquire British pharma company, GW Pharmaceuticals. Uh, now, again, this is looked at as more of a pharma transaction, but both companies do deal in the cannabis space and will increase the footprint of the pro forma company in terms of cannabis. Now, all these M&A deals in 2021 are coming despite the fact that capital is still very hard to come by into, uh, for, for cannabis companies, uh, and, and it's making it very difficult for M&A deals to transpire. Um, but what we are going to, so basically what is happening here is because uh, companies Companies in the U.S. cannot dip into and ask banks for funding because it's still considered illegal in the U.S. They've got to go into profits uh, in order to make any M&A deals happen. So you're seeing profits being spent almost immediately, not only just on research and development, but on consolidation. Uh, so it's why we see cannabis companies not turning huge profits um, because basically they're spending all of their profits to continue research and development, to pay for uh, excess inventory, and to fund these M&A deals. So, but what we're going to witness this year, and I think in future years, regardless of where federal legalization stands, is a continued consolidation in the cannabis space. I think you're going to see bigger companies continue to look for small scale cannabis businesses as an easy way to get footholds in the states that they may not already and may not already be in, or they may be getting stronger footholds in states that they are in, but only marginally. Now, large cannabis companies are going to be looking strategically in these deals. Uh, they're going to they're going to eye companies. They're in states where they can gain a larger footprint and they're going to look for companies that can scale, not just a, a random you know, buy off into a company. They're going to look for companies that actively promote the footprint they're looking to get in and that can, that can scale along with the pro forma company after a merger is completed. It's not just going to be your run of the mill, just a regular merger, just for the sake of being a merger. California has a large group of independent operators, and I think that's going to be prime ground for larger cannabis companies to seek out mergers. Now, if you remember, the U.S. legal cannabis market could reach a valuation of more than $35 billion by 2025, and meaning there's a lot of market share here that companies are going to want a piece of. And these larger companies have a lot more flexibility to scale, get larger, and expand that footprint than these smaller, more mom and pop operations. It doesn't mean that mom and pop operations are going to go away. Uh, it just means means that I think you're going to see these mom and pop operations kind of prime themselves for potential acquisition by targeting uh, certain sectors, certain products and things like that to more in line with potential suitors. Now, it doesn't take into account the $35 billion doesn't take into account the $3.3 billion uh, in potential revenue from states who approve legalization measures in November of 2020 and also through the legislative process in 2021. I suspect 2021 is going to be a strong M&A uh, window uh, for the cannabis space, regardless of what Congress does or in some instances doesn't do in terms of federal legalization. Uh, so I think that's kind of my take. If you're looking at this from an inspect from a, from a investor's perspective, um, you know, I, I think there's still some growth to be had here in cannabis, uh, regardless of federal legalization. We talk about that as a hurdle and it is. But I don't think it's it's one that can that can't be overcome, whether things get legalized and sorted in Congress or not. Now, to switch gears a little bit, I, I, I after a lot of hard work uh, and a lot of discussions and a lot of meetings uh, with the team, we're going to enhance this community that we built by creating a new membership community here on YouTube. Now, before you ask. Uh, nothing that you see now is going to change. I'm still going to bring you the cannabis market insights every week in the marijuana market update. 
and talk about all the things that are cannabis related from an investor's perspective. That's not going to change. What is going to change, however, is that we're going to provide even more cannabis insights, information, stocks, and news to you. Uh, this includes exclusive content that has interviews with cannabis in insiders, blog posts, company breakdowns, uh, along with content related to our cannabis watch list and a monthly live chat with me. Uh, those are just going to be some of the many things we're going to add to this community. So things are still in the works, but we're very, very close. I think we're going to launch here very soon. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned here on YouTube to find out more about what that's going to look like and how you can be a part of it. I think it's going to be a great deal. Uh, it's going to give you access to a lot of insider content, and I think you'll be very excited to be a part of it. Now, that said, I do want to make sure I do thank everyone who watches these videos each and every week. We put in a lot of work. We want to make sure we're providing you the best information out there for cannabis investing. It's not an easy space to get into, uh, and it's not an easy space to stay in. And we want to make sure that we're helping you by providing you information that helps you grow your portfolio using cannabis stocks. Now, I've had some questions on some stocks to evaluate. I'm going to get to those. Don't worry. Uh, I, I have a list, and it's a lengthy one, and I'm going to get to those. I'm going to start breaking down some stocks uh, and letting you know kind of what my thoughts are on them. But keep sending them in. Um, you can email me at feedback at moneymarkets.com, that email address right down there. Uh, or you can comment below in the YouTube section. I'm more than happy to take a look at those, respond to those comments, and, and take a look at those companies that you're asking me to take a look at to let you know whether they're potential investments, maybe even some that we want might want to add to our uh, cannabis watch list. Uh, we'll, we can talk more about that as well. Um, and don't forget, to, we've got a lot more on our YouTube channel than just uh, Marijuana Market Update. Again, I do appreciate everyone who, who does watch the Marijuana Market Update and, and comments. We love the community. Love, uh, love seeing your feedback, but we do have uh, a new video series, Ask Adam Anything. I get to sit down once a week and talk to our chief investment strategist, Adam O'Dell, and uh, ask him any question that you pose to us. Uh, and you can send those questions to feedback at moneymarkets.com. We've got our Bull and the Bear podcast, uh, which is also uh, going on very strong. And then uh, Greens on Fortunes co-editor, Charles Sizemore, uh, has a weekly series called Investing with Charles Sizemore, where he breaks down stocks and lets you know whether they're good potential investments or ones you should stay away from. He does that each and every week. Also check out moneymarkets.com every day for new content that provides safe, sound, smart, simple, profitable investment information for you. Sign up for our free daily e-letter as well. You get that all sent to your email box for free. So I'm Matt Clark, research analyst with Money Markets, host of the Bull and the Bear podcast and the Marijuana Market Update. Until next time, everyone, safe trading. <laughs>